All right, YouTube, there are two new general election polls, Trump versus Clinton, because uh, Trump's the nominee, Clinton's, you know, there's a 99% chance she'll be the nominee. Uh, there are two new polls that have come out that have been aggregated on RCP. If it's not aggregated on RCP, I'm not going to pay attention to the poll, honestly, because there are some polling firms that are better than others. Um, and even then, you have to look at the aggregate to get the true idea. But these should be concerning for the Clinton camp, because typically Democrats do very well in the state of New Jersey. But right now it looks like Hillary Clinton's leading by like four points or a little bit more than that. That should be concerning because Trump hasn't even really ramped up his actual campaign. Right now he's holding the, the rallies and conferences sort of in the interim period between, I mean essentially he's won the primaries but the general hasn't, te there hasn't been a Republican convention yet. He doesn't even have a VP candidates picked out yet. Or if he does, he hasn't told anyone who it is. So he's in an interim. He's sort of, sort of in limbo right now. And yet he's within striking distance of Hillary Clinton. And there have been several polls, actually, that were, were fairly close to this. This is the closest it's been in New Jersey, of all places. Now, part of this might have to do with the fact he's from New York City. Chris Christie's been on board visibly with his campaign. Is presumably going to help him out there as well. If Trump has managed to actually turn New Jersey into a competitive state, whether he wins or not, by the way, means nothing. If he's simply made it a competitive state, can you imagine what he's going to do in New York, where most of the state is reliably red? Most of the state has gone Republican repeatedly in the last few election cycles. The only major holdout is New York City. That's Donald Trump's hometown. What ends up happening if he gets an extra million people or so to vote for him in New York? He turns it red, which means he wins the election right then and there. If he turns New York red, it doesn't matter if Hillary holds on to half of the fucking swing states. That's the problem for Pennsylvania right now is a swing state. It hasn't been for the last few elections. It was kind of sort of a swing state, but it leaned heavily enough blue that Obama had no problem there. He went there like once. He had Biden go there a couple times, and that's really all he did. He didn't hold any major rallies there other than one, and he won the state handily. In Michigan, I don't even think, I think he sent Biden up to Michigan. He didn't even bother to campaign there. He was ahead consistently by the low double digits, upper single digits. He didn't really worry about losing Michigan. Trump now has turned Michigan, Pennsylvania, and apparently New Jersey into swing states, which is more than he could have ever hoped for. In New York, there is good reason to believe. I know a lot of people think it's pie in the sky. But again, remember the demographics of the state. It's not actually that blue outside of New York City. It's actually a red state that simply has New York City attached to it. Trump has a home field advantage there that is significant enough, I believe, to get enough of the urban working class to vote for him in the Long Island area especially. I believe he can turn it red. Will he? It remains to be seen. I'd give him a good, a far better shot at it than any past candidate in a hell of a long time. And in New Hampshire, they're tied. Now, this is a state, New England, uh, where you'd think that Hillary could do a little bit better than in some of the swing states, you know, a place like Iowa. Or, or even a place like maybe Nevada or, or North Carolina, and yet they're tied there. Um, I think there's an evening out across the board where a, a fairly large subset of the population, whether the state's red or blue, simply can't support Hillary. Now, I've had several people uh, shitpost on some of my videos saying, oh, Trump still loses against Bernie. That's, uh, that's true in the polling right now, partially because Bernie uh, seems more likable to the younger demographic. However, Bernie will almost certainly not be the Democratic nominee. Hillary Clinton is still ahead in California. I don't like Hillary. I'm, I'm not rooting for either of them. I think that they should slug it out to the end because they're close in the delegate totals. But at the end of the day, the DNC is still run by a former Hillary campaign manager, number one. At the end of the day, number two, she has still received a far larger proportion of the popular vote. And uh, at, at the end of the day, number three, she's still ahead in delegates. Bernie Sanders has a major uphill battle going into several states where he's competitive in. Yeah, he's competitive in the rural states that are up for votes, but he's not competitive in New Jersey. Uh, in California, he continues to lag a few points behind. And even if he pulls off a win there, 
it doesn't get him to the level Hillary will be at. That's the problem. Hillary Clinton, not just because of superdelegates, but because of voting totals, can actually lose in a narrow race in California. And simply by winning New Jersey's delegates, which she will by large numbers, uh, she will still be the nominee of the Democratic Party. And it's, it's, it's a popularity pissing contest. Uh, I mean, you've got to understand, she has received more popular votes. Now, I, I agree with the Bernie bros when they say a lot of that is because people are settling for Hil Hillary, they think she's inevitable, or they're just, they're just trying to be pragmatists and they don't really care about ideology. I fully understand that. I happen to agree with you there. I think a lot of people just jumped onto her campaign, superdelegates included, because she seemed inevitable at the time. Now, towards the end of the, st of the game, it's very difficult, even though people realize she's not technically inevitable to get over to Sanders in large enough numbers to take him seriously enough to get him the nomination. And if he did, by the way, I would expect a mass exodus of the older Democrats from the Democratic Party. You'd retain the youth vote, you'd retain a lot of the business Democrats that have been hemorrhaged to the Republicans, but you'd lose the over 50 demographic, which doesn't vote heavily Democrat anyway, but it's still, you know, several millions of people, all told, that would be leaving the party that could also throw some shade onto her onto bernie's chances in places again in the rust belt he'd hold the unions better than hillary but what does this say about his ability in a place like florida in a place like virginia in a place like nevada probably not the best of of picks ultimately you have two democratic candidates that both suffer a significant deficit in certain regions of the country now hillary's deficit is bigger i will admit hers is more worrying for the dnc if they had any sense at all if the dnc had sense they'd pull out the stops to get sanders in realizing that hillary is so weak she can barely beat a socialist they'd let sanders win they'd have him accept hillary as vice president and they would attempt to unify that way but they're not doing that, are they? They're doing everything they can to try to get Sanders to drop out before the vote's even held, which he won't do. Ultimately, their efforts are for naught, though. Hillary will be the nominee, almost certainly. It's like the slimmest of chances that she doesn't get it. <clears throat> That would require a massive amount of maneuvering with superdelegates. I don't think he can accomplish that. I think Hillary is more likely to end up wooing more superdelegates to herself than the other way around on the basis that she got a higher total of the popular vote and more states all told. Uh, however, uh, Hillary Clinton is now tied with Trump very early on in New Hampshire. That's not good. I, I believe Obama was several points ahead uh, fairly early on and she's only barely ahead in uh, traditionally what has been an extremely blue state which is New Jersey and with the possibility of New York flipping with close polling in Michigan and Pennsylvania with Ohio basically off the table for the Democrats with North Carolina basically off the table for the Democrats Hillary's not going to make inroads there either um, it's looking up for Trump and down for his opposition Unless they form a unity ticket, if Bernie Sanders is VP, which I don't think will happen. I don't think, number one, Hillary wants it. I don't think, number two, Debbie Wasserman Schultz wants it. I don't think they want to be upstaged by, upstaged by Sanders. And number three, even if he was, he said so many bad things about Hillary, it would look a little bit odd. I don't think it would actually help draw the Sanders supporters back into the ticket at high enough levels. I think you're going to see a mass exodus of business Democrats, younger, under 30 Democrats some older Democrats, certain minority groups, and I think at the end of the day, uh, when voting is held in the general election, I think Trump will be the next president of the United States. Again, though, I say this as a libertarian, I'll be voting for Johnson, but I mean, I guess if Trump can keep Clinton out, I guess uh, worse things could happen. That's about all. Peace out.